All right, welcome back. Uh, this episode is going to be a little different. Um, I wanted to talk about one of my other uh, favorite things, which is camera trapping, and I wanted to keep it a little more focused today on just the sensors. Um, and then down the road, maybe I'll do other episodes about the housings and different things I've encountered in the field. Um, but let's take a look here. So <clears throat> there's there are a lot of different ways you can do camera trapping, and I'm talking about the DSLR or mirrorless camera traps. Um, and they're usually, on paper, very simple, right? But you know, in reality, things are more complicated. But there's the, the biggest thing that you have to think about when you're doing camera trapping is what do you want to capture? What is your goal? Um, so I've gotten insects, but also larger animals such as bears. So let me just kind of put this over here. <laughs> And then, um, all right, so your needs for both of these are going to be very different uh, based on your, on your sensor, right? So you put your camera in the field, hopefully in a case or something that waterproofs it. Um, you need to think about the subject that you're trying to capture, and it's fine if you want to just see what comes down the trail. You're probably not going to get bugs because if you're on a trail, it's depending where you are. For here, it's grizzly bears, fox, ermine. Um, you know, in the lower 48, you can get jaguars if you're in the right spot, uh, mountain lions, black bear, you know, whatever. Um, so one of my favorite <coughs> triggers or sensors is made by a company called Cam Traptions. All right, oops. Uh, Cam Traption. This is their uh, passive infrared trigger. I believe it's version 2. Um, and I like it a lot. It's not perfect, but the batteries last a very long time on it. I think it takes uh, six double A's, but it's, it does not use a lot of energy. And what you do is you can control the beam with here. Um, that's the one thing I wish that we could change is make it more of like a, a circle or a hole. Um, and then you can control the settings here. Um, the thing I don't like about it, if you don't remember, or if you don't have like a reference, it's kind of hard to remember what the dials can do um, in combination with the switches here. Um, and I've never had a problem with the rain. It rains a lot here. Uh, but there's little switches you could set different modes for like triggering video, photo. Now at the same time, it's an easy fix. You just, you can write yourself notes or something. It's not a big deal. Um, I'm just used to some spots that I go to, I don't have cell phone service. So uh, you can't just pull up a manual on your phone. So this is great, passive infrared typically is great for larger animals, especially warm-blooded animals. So it's just putting out an infrared beam and when something breaks, the beam usually has to be a different temperature. Um, it'll trigger the, the camera, right? And what I like about this is it's wireless. Uh, you can wire it to your camera, but I'm a big fan in the field, even though Sometimes wireless could be kind of finicky. I'm a big fan of keeping things simple, and I find cables add complexity to my setup. Um, and then animals chew on them, stuff like that. So I really like it. It's small, and it mounts very easily. It's standard. I think it's a three-quarter, um, was it three-eighths inch or something? Three-quarter inch mount. Um, I'll have to look. It's your typical like tripod mount, uh, whatever that dimension is. So that's going to be really good for your bears. Um, and then after trying to camera trap last summer, uh, I learned a lot about where to place the sensor um, and where I want to place the sensor and how I want to place it uh, to trigger the camera and the flashes. Um, so I really like that one. The other sensor that I own, and I'm just going to talk about the ones that I've used or owned. Um, this is like a Ferrari here, right, versus the Ford Focus. So this is the uh, Cognosys Sabre. Um, this thing is sweet. Um, it also will do just a regular infrared beam. It has these two light sensors here. But what I like about this, this uses, I think it's technically a LiDAR, so it's an active beam instead of just a passive beam. So what that means is it, it'll actually send out pulses. And when something breaks through those pulses, those sampling waves of light, it'll trigger your camera. And it's 
really awesome. And that's how I got this um, moth pollinating uh, a ghost orchid. Um, I used the Cognosis uh, Saber, and it's definitely a very capable piece of equipment. Um, it's pretty easy to use in the field. It has an app that you can program it, um, or it has like these settings. You could just program the settings at home and then just leave it set uh, for the field. Its battery actually lasts a while on its own. It has a built-in battery. Uh, but for my ghost orchid project, I needed to plug it into uh, external power because I was sampling, if I remember correctly, I was sampling at uh, every 10 milliseconds. So it's sampling multiple times a second, right? For hours and hours a day. So that uses up quite a bit of power. Um, so what's nice about this guy, if I remember correctly, it's a 12 volt power source. Um, so I just got a battery from a store and you can get uh, at the end of this cable, it just has a regular barrel port, you know, 12 volt plug, and you can plug it into, you know, virtually any battery you, battery you can carry. So I was trying to sample in one week periods, and that seemed to do the trick for me. Um, versus the cam traptions, it uses mostly just uh, AA batteries, but it does last quite a while because, again, it's a passive infrared. They don't tend to draw a lot of power. Um, and you could build your own. The nice thing about camera trapping, you're only limited by your, your ingenuity. So that's what I really like about it. You can get really creative um, with your sensors. There are laser beam sensors. There are other types of infrared sensors out there. Um, the hardest part is building it so that it can hold up to the elements. Uh, currently in Alaska, it rains a lot. Um, you also have to account for uh, bears you know, or other animals messing with your equipment. Let's see, yeah, this was um, the cam traptions. They also make flashes, which I could talk about in another video. And I really like their flashes. Um, I ended up building a little housing to house my flashes because the bear came through and kept eating the plastic here and exposed it to the rain. Um, I've had ants get into my triggers. In Florida, the ants try to escape the the swamp and they climb up into your camera housing one day open up my camera and there was just hundreds of ants uh, in there and actually an ant got into the uh, saber housing the trigger housing somehow we don't know because uh, I sent it into the company it was the timer wasn't working on it and the ant came in and it fried uh, the circuit so sometimes stuff happens that you don't even know the biggest thing is you have to plan um, so like with the ghost orchids I've shown this in other videos. I think I had it flipped um, in the other video, but this is a ghost orchid. They're relatively rare in Florida, um, and I wanted to capture the pollination uh, or attempted pollination of the ghost orchid, which at the time, it had been done, but it wasn't published yet, so in the, the world of the public, it was still an un, undone thing, right? So it was still new. Um, but you can see it's a very small area you have to sample, and you know the moth, will come in and we, we didn't know what they would do exactly. There was one video of a, vo a moth visiting uh, these orchids, that was by Chris Little, and it's very quick, it's like a second and then the moth is gone, right? So that's why I had my sample rate so high. But I had to aim the sensor in front of the flower. Um, and then the problem with that is these dangle, especially in the wind, and you do get a, a lot of false triggers. Um, so one way around that, uh, Carlton Ward, he has now gotten stuff, pub um, he's done a lot of video work with the Panthers, and he's done photos with ghost orchids, you could see him on uh, Disney+. Plus. Um, he would have multiple saber uh, setups on the same flower to kind of capture different angles, and that would be, if I were to ever do it again, that'd be the way to go. The Cognosis saber is not cheap, I think it runs you about 400 bucks, but it's 100% worth the price. And it lasts years. It'll last forever. And the company, um, I'll show you their website, they're very responsive um, to any sort of questions or requests. Um, so that's the biggest thing. So I'll just pull up. I really like Cognosys. They're a really cool company. Um, so I wanted to show you some other things because sometimes you're like, I wonder if I can do this. Um, the one thing I want to try someday, they actually have a high-speed capture system for insects pollinating flowers. This would have been overkill 
in the swamp. Plus, I don't know about how do you, you waterproof this and power it for a week at a time. Uh, but this uses your bulb mode on a camera and has a little uh, door here that would quickly open and expose the, the frame to your camera. And this is, uh, I believe it's two laser beam setups in front of the flower. So if you're trying to capture like a bee going to a flower and you want that nice, you know, still photo with the, the wings frozen in time, this is your best bet. Um, they also make this device called the Scout, which I didn't need for my ghost orchid project, but this creates a beam across a, a path and then it'll trigger your camera and it and it's all integrated. They make a very nice uh, housing. But again, their their stuff tends to be a little pricier in my opinion. Um, yeah, like that's $439. But it's, again, very capable, very well thought out. That's their macro rail. I wanna get one day when you do stacked photos. And then this is the camera box. Um, I'll think, I think I'm gonna do another video on just like the, the housings, because you could build your own box it's, it's just kind of nice when these come pre-built and this already will integrate with uh, the other Cognosys products. And you already know it's, it's water resistant and um, you know they already have the lens housing built in. It saves you a lot of time. The other company I like is Cam Traptions. Um, and again, I showed you their passive infrared trigger. I own their stands as well. They're very useful if you want a little lower perspective. And I find their housing as well well thought out as well. Um, oh, I guess they have a version three now. Uh, so I really like this company as well. They're also very responsive if you need help from them or if you have questions. So the biggest thing I wanted to cover today were just sensors. Um, there are other sensors. I've seen people build their own. You can go online and just, and you can Google passive infrared or active sensors if you want and you could build your own but then you have to figure out how to house it and how to power it for the duration uh, for the ghost orchids the the site that i went to was at least an hour and a half drive from my house at the time and it was like a two or three mile walk in so i was only checking it once a week the flowers last about a week and a half sometimes uh, the bears i can leave it for two weeks and usually i'm not quite as far out into the woods um, i try to pick places that people aren't as common um, but people always find their way towards my camera trap somehow. So uh, that was my, my spiel, and I'm not sponsored by anybody. Those are just products that I've owned and that I really liked. Um, I've also experimented with MyOps, and they have a little laser. Um, they have a little timer here, their smart trigger. And they're not a bad company. My complaint about MyOps is their products are very inconsistent. You never know if you're gonna get gold or if you're gonna get something that you need to return. Um, but I have owned this sensor and it's a great intervalometer too, great for lightning, uh, stuff like that. And there is a laser beam here, but I found it very difficult to implement in the field. Uh, laser systems are, are very finicky. You know, wind will knock it and then change the light setup. Uh, a mosquito will come in and, you know, trigger the camera. So I'm a big fan of the passive infrared or if you need it, the active infrared. And uh, the other thing is you want to think about your variables. Like for a bear, I don't need to sample the trail every millisecond or 10 milliseconds, right? I only need to sample the trail maybe a few times a minute if you're using the LiDAR system. Otherwise, passive infrared works great. Uh, for those. So uh, thanks for stopping by. I'm hoping to do a few series of these and show you different uh, things before I deploy my camera into the field and start trapping.